Hello. <coughs> so <coughs> this is actually a workshop. So this is the first exercise we're going to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Who wants to be the tester? I'm going to be the volunteer. No. Actually, now I have a little challenge, and the challenge is that this is actually a workshop. But here we have not. We have. We don't have a setup for a workshop. So I will do this in two ways. I will do certain things out of this workshop with you. That's the first thing. And the second thing, don't worry, we are not going to do that. <laughs> and the second thing is, I'm going to share all my learnings or all my findings that I have done in my previous workshops with you. So you get to experience a little bit of meta. All right, let's get started. Um, just to give you should I not stand here? Maybe I move over there. Um, just to, s to show you a couple of pictures from the workshops. Um, these are different um, workshops that we have done. Um, people standing around. Yes, this is not a cinema setup. Here you can see another one. Um, that was happening in Zurich. Um, this one was at the DevOps conference. This was actually my ex-company. We had 60 people in one room. This is also not working very well for a workshop setup, just so you know. This workshop is, is based on a book called Growing Agile, a coach guide to agile testing. Um, you can find that one up on LeanPub. Who has seen this book before? Or the Agile Testing Manifesto? One, just one. Two, two, two out of 100, maybe. Now, here's the agenda. We're doing a warm-up, exchange some practices uh, based on something called TRIZ. Then we're doing a traditional versus agile. So this is the main me speaking part. Then we collect the practices and the takeaways. Now, the step two and uh, step four, we are just, I'm sharing my work because that's something we cannot do in this work, in this cinema setup. Let's do a quick warm-up. War put your hands up if this is true. First sentence, testing is always behind in your experience. Okay, I would say about 5%, 20 hands. Automation is even further behind that. Oh, I see more hands now, almost a whole full room. Testers can't work until development is done. Who would say true? Okay. I would say 10%. I saw 20 hands roughly. There's pressure at the end of a sprint. Oh, a lot of you, almost everyone. Okay, interesting. There's blame around bugs. It's his, her, whatever's fault it is, but there's blame. Okay, five or six hands. Okay. The DevOps team is unhappy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see another 10 hands. Interesting. So this was um, a little warm-up. Now think for yourself, what is your current biggest pain with testing? Usually what I do is I get people to write things on the card, but I we don't have paper and anything else here, so just think for yourself. And now talk to your neighbor. What is your pain with testing? Exchange now with your neighbor that is sitting next to you. You can also move around if you could get together with this man over there. Yes. And I give you two minutes to share your pain with testing. Go.
Okay. Was there one thing that stood out in your conversation? Who wants to share something? Lack of automation. Thank you very much. What else do we have? Lack of data, test data. Yes? Not enough time. Nice one, yeah? What else is the pain that we have? Oh, unclear requirements. So sh what should we actually test then, yeah? Environments to actually do my work as a tester. Interesting, cool. Lack of priority. Everything we have is equally important. Yes, everything is high, everything is very important. Cool. Slow bug fixes. Slow bug fixes. So even if we find something, it takes forever. Cool. What else? Ah, lack of testers or lack of testing mentality more, I would say. Cool, thank you very much. Now, here are a couple of, of um, screens that what I've collected. Um, things are not easy to automate. We don't have time. There is no ownership of the work. They are fragile tests, so that sometimes they break, sometimes they don't. It's very time consuming. We test data is a very, very common one and a very hard one especially if you are dealing with a lot of production data. How do you generate that? How do you deal with that? Too late in the process and environments. The other one in another workshop, um, missing test concepts, expensive flaky tests, mindset fades. What is testing? Running out of time, not enough value. So if there is not enough value, why should we actually do it? Missing automation, manual. Test data, keeping up with regression, that's a, a tricky one. And infrastructure can also be a challenge. And the environments. <coughs> now the next part of the workshop works like that. We are doing a format called TRIS, and we are not able to do that here. So I explain you on a meta level what that is. And I would highly recommend to take this workshop format back to your company, your organization, your team, and try to run it yourself, because it's very eye-opening in my experience. So you can find the format itself on liberatingstructures.com. It's, it's three steps and it takes roughly 20 minutes. So the first step is how can we reliably create not done products? So that's the first question. So people think for themselves, then they work in pairs and then they work in the whole team. That's what we are always doing per step. So here we say, what could you do to actually make it go completely against the wall, make it go crazy, make it that we are going to lose money, um, everything goes um, down the, 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 how do you say, down the, go south, Sh when the shit hits the fan, I'm not sure, but anyway, it, it's going to ha happen in a bad sense. So we're collecting that on post-its, on a poster, then the second question is, is there anything we are doing at the moment that resembles in any shape or form any of these activities? And people think, oh yes, we are actually doing some, some of these things already. So that's the first interesting finding. And the first step uh, is then, the last step is, how am I going to stop it? So what can we do as a team to not do this anymore, to get rid of it, to do things differently? What's my first move? I have a couple of pictures here. Um, um, I have not seen them myself, so and we need to look at them in detail if you want to. So this is, was one team, so the left column is the sabotage fail part, where they collected ideas. The second one is what they are currently doing that goes in this direction. And these are the things that they collected on how to stop actually this situation from happening. So they are struggling with transparency, they didn't have a clear definition of done, which is a huge problem in a lot of teams. Maybe I can ask you the question, who has a definition of done in your current team? I would love to see a lot of hands now, but I don't see so many. I would say I see 30. Who doesn't have a definition of done? Oh, wow. More, okay. I would say 50 people don't have a clear definition of done. A definition of done is basically your main quality criteria. It describes the quality of your product from an outside view, outer quality, and an inside view, the inner quality. 
When we talk about quality, what do we mean? It's written in the definition of done. Now, I'm a scrum guy, that's why, that's why I'm using this terminology. And definition of done is a key element of scrum. Okay, interesting. Having a problem fixer, clear process rules. That's another team. Um, here I have the challenge that I can't even read it anymore. Um, but it's, it's more about doing this workshop exercise and not, not so much about reading other, others' work. That's a, a third team, and they actually connect the, the dots here as well. So here is the how can we go wild to make it break completely. Now here are the collections, what they're doing, and here is the things that they want to actually do to improve. Test preparation, one click, speak up in the team, reserve time for automation. Uh, another team, awareness in the management, I don't know what that is, but yeah. It's really about doing this, this together as a team. <coughs> okay, now comes the, the third part of this, this workshop. Now here is where I talk about traditional versus um, an agile way of testing. So the first part is usually in traditional ways we see that testing is a phase. So we're doing development, we're, doing, we're producing something and then the testing comes afterwards. This is the traditional way of doing uh, testing. Now, we want to get out of that. We want to have testing as an activity. Now, what does that mean? That means that the person that has the testing hat on or the testing mindset is part of this board all the time. So we could also start, hey, how do you know what we need to do? So she or he is asking questions all the time. So sh she's part of the process and she um, she's working with them. What I've seen the best teams doing is pair working. So the tester and developer actually sit together, the tester um, help to improve and ask questions and, and do things like that. So testing is an activity that happens all the time. It's not a phase like in waterfall. Um, who in here gets measured by number of bucks that you find? The more bucks you find, the more money you get. No one? Okay, interesting. Um, I had a client that actually had a large testing team. It was in the... Is this going to be recorded? <laughs> yes. Okay, um, um, yes, so the, we had developers, we had around 20 developers and we had a large QA testing department. They were completely separated and the testers were using their tools, trying to break the system and they were actually measured by number of bugs they found. So the management came to, to us and said, hey, are we actually sure that the testers are doing their job pretty well? So the management idea was, let's introduce some artificial bugs and see if the testers find them. Now, we tr a couple of releases, we could actually um, hinder the doing this, but after a while, okay, we, s we said, okay, let's, let's give it a go, let's run this experiment. So we introduced artificially 10 bugs, and the testers didn't find all of them. You could you could think, wow, that's a disaster basically for the testers. So what happened is actually, I thought, wow, this is going to be a hot temperature in the room because um, people are fighting. It's my back, and why didn't you tell us? This is all about, uh, especially this is against transparency completely because we are doing something to to get them others the the fault. So what happened is actually it was good for the testing team because they said, hey. Do you see? We don't have enough resources to do our work. We need more resources to find all of the bugs that we have in our system. So they turned it around, luckily, and said, hey, let's, let's get some more money, let's get some more time to actually improve the product in a, in a good way. So that was uh, a good thing how this whole story turned out. But um, in general, it's not a good idea. Question to you. How many dots are on this picture? Can you think of a number? Infinitive, yes. Um, good, good guess. Who would say there are zero dots? One. Who would say there are five? Who would say there are ten? Who would say there are fifteen? Who would say there are more than fifteen? 
most of you, I would say more. I define a dot of being that it is this bit here that is actually crossing the, um, the two lines. Because I define that as a business person, as a product manager, I have, um, I can tell you that, okay, if you count now these dots here, they're around, um, I don't know, 15 or something like that. But that doesn't really matter. It's really about asking the question back to say, hey, Peter, what do you mean by a dot? Is it the pixels on the screen? Is a dot for you that bit here or that bit here? That's the interesting part. So testers ask these questions. So this is the, the testing mindset we want to look like to see. What about, what do you mean, why, why is that a problem, when do you face this, what's happening, what do you mean by a dot? This is what um, the testing mindset means. Third one of, out of these five principles, the third one is, are you a checker? So this is the traditional way of, of doing things, basically, um, which is when you automate test cases. Now there is a thing that is much better in automation than a human and that's a machine so we should let machines do the checking for us and not people people are much better in manually exploratory usability testing so that's what we like to see i have another interesting story here actually <coughs> um, another client which um, yeah, i'm thinking about how i could explain this there was, again, a separate test department. I live in Switzerland and um, I work a lo uh, lot with large organizations. Um, they had a separate test department. The test department um, were writing test cases for our requirements that we had. And I sat together as an uh, as architect with the uh, test manager and we were talking about things, concepts and strategies and whatever they were doing and asked him also, hey, let's go into the details. Let me look at your test cases. And he said then, no, I can't show you my test cases because then you guys will make all of them green. And Fatima said, oh, wow, yes, but isn't that the goal that we have at the end, a green check tick box? So you could see he has a different mindset. So he wanted to actually completely do this in a different way than we from a development perspective. And this is the checking mindset, basically, where we actually try to check things, checking the requirements fit the production code. And what we do would like to see is actually a testing mindset. So start with the, the, with the end in mind. How, we, how do we know we are done? How can we actually know for sure that we are not going to break the system? So how do we actually know that it works? So the tester is really a customer representative, a user representative. So talking a lot, asking questions, things like that. So this is the difference between testing and checking. Um, Michael Bolton and James Bach, the two guys very, very uh, famous in the testing community, who heard of these two guys? Yes, 50%, uh, I'd say. Cool, yeah. Um, I like their thinking. You build it, I break it. Breaking the system. So this is the traditional way again. I can break anything. So um, the challenge here is working together in a team. If you have people that always try to break things, it is, it's challenging, let's say. So instead of breaking the system, we're trying to get into the direction of helping to build the best system possible. Ask the questions early. Um, try to validate risks. So. When you're building products, it's all about risks. Maybe I can share another story. There is a... Um, no, that's not one. No, I'm not going to share that one. All right, another one. Um, this is the last principle out of these five. If the tester is responsible for quality. So the tester is basically the quality gate. Now, imagine the pressure on that person. If he, if he or she is the main quality gate, that's a lot of pressure that you, you build up. Um, we, we have a, a another client we worked with where we actually had a testing team in Spain and the customer realized, okay, since my company is building so high quality products and we have um, incorporated the testing mindset completely, we didn't need anymore a separate test team in another country. 
This separate test team in another country could never keep up with requirements changes. They could never keep up with the whole feedback loop with the customer and all the discussions we were talking. So we actually said the whole team takes the responsibility for quality and not having a separate team that takes that tries to test the quality into the product has never worked for us. All right. So this was the little um, theory part where I talk a lot. And now what we're doing is we're looking at, so, uh, at some posters. Now what we do usually is, um, I need to, no. So we usually hang these five principles that I just shown you up in the room. And I would highly recommend that you do that as well. And then you ask people, hey, uh, move around in the room and go to the poster that you feel very comfortable with. Which principle think, do you think makes completely sense in your world? Which, which, what are you doing already? Walk there and then write things there down. Add practices that worked for you. Write, uh, make post-its, hang them up on the wall and uh, bring them up. Then the second round, we walk to the poster that confuses you. So which principle would you say, oh, wow, that doesn't make sense? You write things again down, you write down observations that help or didn't help. Um, and the last poster is actually what is worthy yet elusive, which means that would make sense, but it's completely out of our way of how we do things. And then we write things again down, up to observations that help. And I show you a couple of screens of those posters. Uh, boom, 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 boom. So here, um, there we are. This is how it looks like. Oops, wrong button. Here we are. All right, first poster. So basically, we make a poster and we have finding bugs versus preventing bugs. And I owe and I recommend to say, how do you do this? How do you do this? Unit tests, pair specification, apply BDD, DDD, things like that. Things I can't read anymore, but doesn't really matter. Important is for the people that are there that they talk to each other and that they learn from each other. So this is finding bugs versus preventing bugs. Breaking the system versus help building the best system possible. Encourage others to wear the testing hat. How would, what if? So coaching other people's basically. Um, tester has to share its knowledge. Yes, if that's happening, that helps a lot and things like that. Third poster is tester is responsible for quality. Then oh, we have here trunk based development. The why don't just discuss test cases and things like that. Testing as a phase versus activity. Tester supports tests, devs in test setup. Oh, before commit reviews, cool. I think automation is there. Invest the needed to cover testing phase. So this is about um, people talking to each other. Oh, are you a checker or are you a tester? Automate so you can focus on the interesting stuff, Be at being really a tester. And I think that's that's one of the challenges. If you're not able to automate, then you might not have time to actually do the proper testing. Now, this is from another workshop. I skip over those automation, engagement, quality acceptance, feedback, the why, best practices, pair programming, tester in the planning meeting. Yes, please. Um, what else do we have here? Cross-functional teams. Yeah, that's a good one. Shared understanding of quality. Everyone needs to understand that. Yes, please. Um, build the best you need. Best in comparison to what? Bugs bashing days. Oh, that's an interesting one. Bug bash days. Basically, that's certain days where we um, try to um, find bugs and fix bugs. And, and so on and so on. So these are just a couple of ideas to, to give you an idea of what, how that looks like. All right, in order to close this workshop that we have done now, hands up. 
Is it possible to prevent bugs before you write code? Who thinks yes? Ah, oh, cool. A lot of you. Who would say no, that's not possible? <laughs> we need to talk afterwards. <laughs> the whole team can be responsible for quality. Who thinks yes, that's definitely possible? Oh, almost everyone, I would say. Who would say no, that's not possible? You need to have a separate team. No one. No one brave enough. I don't, I don't call you out if, if you ever <laughs> raise your hand. It is possible to delight the customer without pressure in the sprint. Who would say that's possible? Yes. Yeah, not so many. I would say around 50%, yeah, 40%. Okay. It's possible to be part of a happy DevOps team. <laughs> Who would say yes? Alcohol always helps if you're not unhappy, but I would not recommend that. Don't, don't do that at home. <coughs> cool, thank you. So what we do as well in our workshops, we to say, okay, in pairs, talk about your takeaways. Then you know what? Let's do that. What is your takeaway out of the last 35 minutes? Talk to your neighbor about it. And I set the timer. I would love to hear some takeaways. Who wants to share a takeaway? All right. Finish this sentence. If only they would. Please raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now is the, the microphone here. Who wants to finish this sentence? Otherwise, I would go to the next one. If only I. Who wants to finish that sentence? If only I could leave this room because there's coffee waiting outside and it's <laughs> horrible. Peter is asking a lot of questions. Th and there's no coffee. There's no coffee, <laughs> or beer, even no. better. No beer? <laughs> oh man, wrong conference. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> something to improve. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks again, Peter. Um, Hi, if only I could run this workshop back home. S can you repeat it, sorry? Oh, sorry. If only I could run this workshop back home and ah. the organization. Cool, what hinders you? This is not a coaching question. <laughs> Uh, I have to check it out first, but um, maybe we will. Cool, thank you, that's awesome. What are the next steps for you? <laughs> <laughs> Since there's no coffee, what, what should I do? I go home? I, what, 
<laughs> All right, um, I'm closing down. So this is the, t the, agile, the, the testing manifesto that comes from Growing Agile from the two ladies, um, Karen and the other lady, I can't remember the name, but they are awesome, very nice. I, I had a lot of email conversations with them already and they have a awesome training material. So these are the five principles that they have um, that I just shown you. All the drawings are from them. So the drawings I did not m do myself. So the, oh, thank you very much for all that. And what will you do different tomorrow? Send me a tweet. I'm happy to read that or connect on LinkedIn or other social media channels. And here is actually a URL thanks to a lady who approached me and asked me, hey, where can I get the Kindle version of that book? And I said, I don't know, but I figured out there is actually a, a Kindle version. And you can get that for free, EPUB or Mobi. If you go to that URL, you can download it for free. Cool. That's all I have. At least my slides are over now. I could show you more pictures. No, that's not what we're doing. We are going to do go in the Q&A section with Slido, I think.